The first robotic 3D printer was made in 1984 by Charles W. Hall. Hall's first 3D printing system was stereolithography, or SLA. SLA is a process in which protons from an ultraviolet laser light source is targeted onto the surface of a photocurable liquid mono, mono bath and scanned in different patterns. Hall's SLA technology model was the first patent 3D printer, and after this, Hall commercial, commercialized this technology, and SLA is still used today. The manufacturing process of 3D printing involves material being laid down layer by layer to form a three-dimensional object. 3D printing begins with a computer model of a certain object and then a robotic device uses that model to layer material to create the 3D object. This type of manufacturing is known as ad additive manufacturing because unlike traditional manufacturing, the object being built is made from scratch rather than being cut, drilled, or machined off. In the medical field, 3D printing has been great for many different things and is commonly used for making prosthetics, making implants, and medical imaging. 3D printing does not use the traditional method of manufacturing. Instead, it uses additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing uses computer-aided design to design the object by creating a, a sketch. Once the sketch has been completed, the additive manufacturing equipment reads the data from the computer-aided design and layers materials on top of each other to build the desired object. There are many different types of additive manufacturing. Some include FDM, D 3DP, and SLS. However, 3D printing in the medical field commonly uses VAT photopolymerization, and this can be split into three different categories. The first being SLA, the second being DLP, and the third being CDLP. Stereolithography, or SLA, involves a build platform that is submerged into a tank filled with liquid photopolymer resin. After submersion, a single point laser inside the machine finds a cross-sectional area of the design through the bottom of the tank and solidifies the material. The process is repeated over and over again to build layers up and produce the object. Then, the object is usually post-cured by UV light to improve their mechanical properties. Direct, direct light processing, or DLP, involves a very similar process to SLA. However, DLP uses a digital light projector screen in order to flash a single image of each layer all at once. DLP is able to produce faster print times compared to SLA because each layer is exposed at once, rather than cross-sectional areas with the laser. Continuous DLP, or CDLP, is exactly the same as DLP, although CDLP relies on the continuous motions of the build plate in an upward motion. CDLP allows for pro faster print times as well because the printer does not have to be stopped and separated from the build plate after each singular layer. Traditionally, prosthetic labs would need to archive models and templates for prosthetic limbs. These would be used on the ba as the basis for making new limbs for a patient. As the size of the patient base grows and their needs change, warehousing and inventory tracking of these templates become a significant cost. 3D manufacturing allows for templates and detailed notes to be kept in a di digital file, reducing the need for physical storage and the costs associating with keeping detailed inventory need records. Manufacturing medical devices has always been a highly specialized job that was time intensive. This results in an expensive finished product. 3D printing has enabled the manufacturing process to create a perfectly reproduced medical implant or prosthetic in a fraction of the time and with minimal human involvement in the manufacturing process. Companies willing to invest in 3D pr printing in the medical field will have the potential to realize significant profits while undercoming companies still relying on the traditional methods of manufacturing implants and prosthetics. The ability to share digital files and templates has opened up a new world of collaborative work in implants and prosthetics. Before 3D printing, a large component of the manufacturing cost would come from research and development, with companies looking to patent ideas to prevent other companies from using their ideas. The National Institute of Health has created a database of 3D print files for the medical industry to aid in the sharing of ideas, which will translate into enormous savings in research and development costs. 
Hello, my name is Tony Goodale, and I will be talking about current applications of 3D printing in the medical industry. Since its introduction, 3D printing has seen increasing utilization in medical applications. Implants, prosthetics, and medical imagery models are areas that are currently seeing 3D applications, and new techniques are being researched and developed in hospitals around the world. Prosthetics have long been an expensive and highly er specialized area of medicine. Costs of $50,000 per prosthetic limb are considered normal, and those can wear out within three to five years. Child prosthetics wear out even quicker than that due to normal childhood growth. Limbs are custom built and require multiple fitting sessions to reduce swelling and inflammation on the stump. According to the Department of Veterans Affairs, a lifetime cost for prosthetics and treatment of a loss of a single leg was $1.4 million in 2010. As no two patients are the same, mass production or utilization of stock templates is not a viable solution. 3D printing has brought the ability to quickly produce a custom implant at a low cost. As the patient's needs change, the prosthetics STL file can be digitally modified and the prosthetic reprinted. Scanning software can scan a patient's healthy limb and mirror the image, allowing a near-perfect reproduction of their missing limb. RAISE 3D has focused resources on pr producing prosthetics for children impacted by war in Sierra Leone. Using 3D printing, they were able to produce 52 sets of prosthetics within two months and lowered the average cost per prosthetic to $50. Implants are commonly used in cranial reconstruction surgeries. Previously, the method was to roughly shape a bone replacement and then heavily modify it during the surgical process in order for it to fit. With the ability to remove a section of skull and render a 3D model of it, a 3D printer can then be used to reprint an identical replacement that will fit properly and retain the original shape of the head. Spinal and hip implants have been crafted with 3D printers permitting faster turnaround times due to the speed and accuracy of the surgical implants. The ability to bring complex medical imaging to life in a 3D model has allowed surgeons to explore and map out surgical procedures in unique cases before cutting a patient open. This allows a greater deal of confidence and visualization of potential problems before the actual surgery begins. Anatomical models are also being used extensively in surgical training which is preferable to cadavers due to the availability and cost. There are open source software packages, 3D Slicer as an example, that enable importation of imagery from MRIs, CT scans, ultrasounds, and nuclear medicine. The ability to study these images as 3D printed models allows surgeons to access areas that may be unreachable inside the human body and then devise methods to perform complex surgical procedures that may not have otherwise been attempted. Neurosurgery has also seen great strides in the ability to visualize tumors and their relationship with the brain, blood vessels, and nerves before the surgery begins. This allows the surgeons to map out the safest route to remove a tumor without causing damage to the surrounding tissues. Radiologists are seeing benefits in the clinical diagnoses, and communication to surgeons. Radiologists are actively being encouraged to familiarize themselves with the process of 3D imaging and printing and how it affects their field. Hearing aids were historically produced as a one-off, custom-built product that took a single skilled worker a week to produce. 3D printing can scan, model, and accurately print a hearing aid in less than one day. Hearing aids appear to be one of the first medical industries that have almost been completely overtaken by 3D printing. It has been noted that this hasn't brought any real savings to the market as the few companies that do produce hearing aids have ensured the costs remain high. The process of manufacturing dentures has seen similar strides. Previously, each denture had to be meticulously crafted and fit to each patient. Oral scanning and 3D printing have combined to allow significant decreases in production time of a denture that is perfectly fit to the patient. In addition, the company Invisalign has produced braces used in the orthodontic field. 
They are fit to each individual patient and are a great example of the benefits of mass production and custom fitment in the medical industry through the use of 3D printing. Thank you. My name is Kyle and I'll be talking about 3D printing and how managers can successfully implement this in the medical field. So as Tony previously said, there are many applications that 3D printing can take place within the medical industry. More so, managers are dealt the job of actually implementing the printing and overseeing that it is actively working. The first order of business for managers, though, is trying to allocate funds that can be dedicated strictly towards 3D printing. Managers may have to take money from other areas that would help alleviate costs through the printing or try and increase donations to the medical center. Money is the first and most important piece to bring in 3D printing to medical use. The next thing to do is decide what type of 3D printer is suitable for use in the medical industry. There are two major options, the first being the Object 500 Con X3, and the second being the Dimension 3D Elite printer. The Object 500 is used to create models of a living person's inside organs and lets doctors study these before actually going into an operation. Additionally, these models can be used to explain to a patient what really is happening to them and help them understand the whole operation better. The Dimension 3D Elite is a printer that utilizes fused deposition modeling and is mainly used to cre create prosthetic limbs. The printer is highly effective at creating working parts of the body and has only an 8 week lead time. Essentially a hospital would love to bo have both these printers, but this may be a challenge to managers, to managers, especially with limited funding, so deciding between the two can be a very crucial decision. Managers could always pick one and later down the road work towards getting another or even more of the same printer. The next thing managers have to think about in regard to 3D printing is actual training that's going to happen for the general and the specific staff on how to use it. 3D printing can be seen as complex and ensuring that all the staff know what they are doing when operating printers is crucial. Another important component to printing is the, th is the CAD files that are being used. Managers will most likely have to hire people who are knowledgeable about the program so the files can be created and used to make whatever is in need. The next step after this for the managers would be testing the models on patients and ensuring that everything is working properly. This could be a slow process and take some time but it is essential to make sure all the technology is working correctly before it becomes widely used. After that step is done, finding the patients who can be helped by the 3D printer is the next task. This also, be, this also may be a long and lengthy process because you have to go through the, their paperwork, determine if the 3D printer could help them, see if their insurance covers the cost, and finally proceed with the procedure. After procedures for patients have been done, Managers will need to look back and review everything that has been done, from the starting point of picking a printer to training the staff and testing everything out. Evaluating everything that has been done is critical to understanding what things went well and not so well. In addition, this process can lead to establishing areas that may, be need, that may need to be improved upon and make for better progression overall. There may be minor tweaks or major overhauls needed and as the manager reviews these type of things, they will become more apparent. Lastly, when implementing the 3D printing, managers need to be open to suggestions and try different things to see how they will make this technology work within their medical center. There may, there may be many different things that can be done, but essentially this is specific to every manager with every situation being different. Hi there, my name is Kelvin. I'll be talking about the future of 3D printing. Um, first, I'll give a brief overview of the future of 3D printing and then I'll narrow it down into the medical aspect of it all. Studies have suggested for years to come, 3D printing will be available worldwide. Much like how a cell phone is now, a little computer that everyone has, everyone will be wanting a 3D printer soon enough. Mostly just to create small things that you wouldn't be able to purchase at a re regular retail store, or Amazon. 3D printing will be able to democratize the making of goods, food, medical supplies, and big buildings and landscapes. So now we will move on to the future of 3D printing in medicine. 
There are many possibilities for 3D printing in the medical industry. As Tony touched on earlier, 3D printing is being used to create prosthetics, implants, imaging, hearing aids, etc. In the future, 3D printing will be manufacturing and finding ways to repair more complex parts of the human body such as human tissue, cardio cardiovascular problems, as well as coronary heart disease. So now I'll be moving on to the future of 3D printing of human tissues. Creating a replica of human tissues through 3D printing can be very difficult. The custom designed integrated tissue and organ printing, also known as ITOP, is a complex process including advanced manufacturing, cell biology, molecular biomarkers, and materials that have not yet translated into, tra into clinical practice. The hardest part of the process is to maintain the cell viability in a large tissue. There have been many tests using human-shaped ears which were constructed based off CT scans which have been positive. This is a step in the right direction, however, there is a lack of materials which limit uh, clinical translation. Doctors are not yet completely sure if the material is safe enough for humans. Nevertheless, there is a group led by Atala who is concentrating on the production of complex tissues and solid organs for human application. So now I'll be moving on to the future of 3D printing for cardiovascular issues. 3D printing can be made from CT, MRI, or echocardiology data, and they provide the advantage of quick feedback, direct manipulation, and a deeper understanding of cardiovascular activity and the underlying pathologies. 3D printing is used in a number of ways for cardiovascular problems. It is used for diagnostic assistance, optimization of management algorithms, to planning and simulating surgical and interventional procedures. The technology of 3D printing has been used in structural, valvular, and congenital heart diseases. Patient-specific implants and custom-made devices are able to be produced, which opens for new possibilities for cardiovascular research. This helps physicians and trainees understand human body parts and the heart in a more complex, up-close procedure. 3D printing is expected to have a huge influence in cardiovascular care on the next generation and will help them better understand their own issues and also improves patient engagement and understanding. Lastly, I'll be talking about the future of 3D printing for coronary heart disease, also known as coronary artery disease. 3D printing serves very useful in the understanding of cardiac anatomy associated with coronary heart disease. 3D printing is ben beneficial in pre-surgical planning and simulations of complex situations. This technology allows surgeons to research new methods based on randomized trials which confirms its value over traditional tools.